Welcome back to another episode. I'm out in the shed again, working flat out on the project boat. I really want to get it done by the end of this year. And the way things are going, I should get there. The only thing that I might be lacking is a motor. We'll see how we go, something might come up. Quick message from future Kurt. There is a bit of a longer update on what I'm doing today on the Haynes at the end of this video. And a little ins and outs of what I do when I'm glassing. So check it out at the end of the video. Bye. All right guys, so in this episode, we had some good weather to run the coast. I'll get out with the guys on Blue Murder. We went chasing Barramundi and it did not disappoint. We found Barra. We didn't find him in big numbers, but we did get some good fish. And on top of that, we sounded a good mark on the way there. Picked up a really nice tusky as well. One of the barra I found where you would think you would find a barra, sort of like tucked into rocks, like weedy sort of rock. The other one, you would not expect to see a barra sitting where it was. All right, guys, let's get out of the shed, get into the water and start chasing some fish. All right, all the gears in the car. The coast looks unreal. So tomorrow, we're gonna do it all again. Not taking a little tinny tomorrow. Gonna be heading out on a mate's um, Haynes Hunter. And we're just gonna run the coast, see what we can find. So this is that spot that we sounded on the way to one of our barra spots. First dive, you see a big cod there come up to greet me. There was actually quite a few cod hanging around this rock. Sort of sat down on the bottom there. Notice a few slaty brims hanging around. I'm thinking I might see a finger mark or a good school of finger mark. So just sort of hang around. See a good tusky and shoot straight over the top of it. Just completely missed it. So this is a similar spot. I tried to land on that same area again, but we couldn't see the bottom from the surface. So it was just a bit of a guess. So on the way down, big, nice blue tusky swims past. Stayed super calm, got a good shot. Straight up to the surface, secured the fish. Now you see where my shot comes out here. There's sort of no chance of this tearing off this fish. You could shoot through that cheekbone there, somewhere near its mouth, just below its eye there. If you don't stain it, you'll get a really good holding shot. This one here, I don't know if I brain him right. All right, now let's look for some barra. I was swimming around for a while and I finally found a little patch of bait. So I just hung around the bait and did a few drops down in that general area. And I came across this nice little school of fish. I just found this crack and just sort of slowly swam along the bottom and just sort of I wasn't really kicking at all, I was just sort of pulling with my hands and yeah, spot these, I think there was four or five there a few of them spook, one hangs around and they get a really good shot on it. You see the spear or the flopper wasn't quite out there so just give it a quick little push just in case the fish kicks off. But those barra skulls are that hard, just a little pin on the flopper is enough to hold in sometimes. Righto, can you see the barra? It was about an 80 to 90 centimetre barra just sitting there looking at me as I was swimming past. It really makes you think how many barra you might have passed up over the years. And it goes to show it pays to spend a bit of time having a good look around when you're hunting for barra. Yeah. You alright? Oh, hold on. It's stuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now oh, I think that it's good. Ready? I'm up. So yesterday I glassed this hatch, so that hatch goes down into the bilge there, into here. So as well as that, I've I'm talked about this in the other episode, I think I put the little knees in, I don't know if you can see them under there or not. Knees underneath the side pockets, just to um, give these side pockets a little bit of, little bit of strength. If there's any sort of downward pressure, people standing on them and stuff like that. They're quite long, they were already in. A little step. I've put a couple layers of glass on the sides of the hull just to fill in where I haven't already glassed. So obviously I, I ground the whole boat back initially when I started the project and I ground all the flow coat off. So in doing that I did take a little, obviously a little bit of extra glass off as well. I just wanted to make sure it was built back up again to at least what it was and hopefully it's it's actually a little bit thicker than what it was. And likewise in the front I've done the same all the way around. Beefed it all up again, 
obviously glass, fully glassed in that bit of um, extra support that I put in up the top there. So that's all done now as well. And today's little project will be, obviously I'll, um, I'll sand that up and fit that in, make sure that looks all good. I'm gonna go through and um, tidy this up a little bit, but I'm gonna put some tape over all these holes, all on the outside of the boat here. There's sort of holes everywhere in the cabins, from sort of here, here back to here. Here forwards, not so bad, but yeah, here back to here. My plan is to put some tape over top of here, and then on the inside here, I'll put a little bit of bog and then glass. So all this, I've, I've gone through and ground all that all ready to take glass. I've done it you know, all the way around. You can see little random red and green patches everywhere. So that's today's job. So I'll keep chipping away at that. Hopefully get that done. Um, that shouldn't really take too long once I, once I start moving. If you've made it this far, that's awesome. Now I've had a request from a few guys who watch my videos mainly for the boat building. Hopefully you just all watch the diving as well. But yeah, it's hard because only like the real crazy people like me like watching guys just go through the whole process. Not many people really like that and watch it, I don't think. What I think would be a benefit for some of you guys are the little tips and stuff that I've picked up or that I've worked out and things that I do that I think makes my life a little bit easier when I'm working on the boat. I'm a full DIYer. I've, like I had a mate show me a few bits and pieces, but I've just sort of been working it out as I go. So here's one of those little tips. So this is that rear hatch you looked at before that's going into the build here. So a good half of this you're gonna be able to see when you're up in the boat. The rest of it's gonna be tucked underneath the transom. So what I did was um, the back end of it, I kept, the, I kept the lid a little bit shorter and I've added these little tabs in. So that way there's gonna be a nice gap, you know, a nice sort of 10 to 15 mil gap down at the back of the transom so water and stuff can get down into the bilge. And another little handy tip, I actually did it with these um, these hatch lids as well. I put them on like a little stand. So I've screwed those stands on. I've actually unscrewed one of them, but I'll flip it over. I can get these couple of top layers of glass onto here and I wrap it around to everywhere that's gonna contact in the boat. So it's all nice and neat and consistent all the way around. And then what I'll do now is I'll take this one off and I'll just infill the glass. I'll overlap it a little bit. Just put a couple layers of glass on there. That'll completely coat the stamolite and job done. So what, what you can see in the boat will be really nice and smooth and neat. All just nice two layers of 450, really nice and neat. And then on the underside where you're not gonna see, that's where the joins are. Yeah, and even those joins are gonna be hard to see because I'll, I'll give it a really good sand and I'll, I'll really blend that glass into, into what I've already done. But you still will see a bit of a join. So you don't want those joins on the top side, you want them where you can't see them, so down underneath. Doing, like, doing all those little things like that, you end up with a, a much better finish and that's something that I've been consciously thinking of with everything that I do. So when I put these footrests in, I gave it a really good, really good grind up and around where the glass goes. So I know that I'm gonna add that glass in anyway when I put those footrests in and you end up with a really nice transition into that original glass. So yeah, there's a little tip. So hopefully that ticks a couple of boxes for some of you guys that have been asking me about things like that. Now, if you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you keep up to date with the boat, up to date with all my diving and everything that I get up to, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Cheers.